So I've been saying how big of a deal geometry nodes are going to be in Blender for a while, and this particular modifier is probably one of the best geometry nodes tools I've seen so far. Plus, you can download it for free, and it just got a massive update. Let's go ahead and talk about it. All right, so a lot of you probably remember Bagapi is a modifier that you can download for Blender that basically comes with a bunch of different tools built on geometry nodes. So it does a ton of different things, including scattering, ivy, um, other things like that. I made a video on it before, but this is an update because they've added a bunch of new features to Bagapi. Now remember, Bagapi comes with a free version right here, um, which is just the modifier. There's also a Bagapi Assets tool that you can download. The Assets contains a bunch of different tools, including plants, and rocks and grass and other things like that um, that you can use along with some of the tools built into Bag of Pie. So I'm gonna link to both of those in the notes down below. If you go through my link, it's gonna take you to this assets page, but if you wanted the free modifier, you can click on this button right there in order to get it. So let's jump over and take a look at some of the new features contained inside of this new version. All right, so once you install the modifier, you can access the tools by tapping the J key on your keyboard. Notice how this shows you all the tools contained inside of Bagapi. And there's some pretty cool ones that have been added in this new version. So first off, we now have the ability to add cables. So you can come in here, select a pair of cubes, for example, tap the J key and click on the cable button. And you can actually draw a cable between these two boxes right here. And what it's gonna do is it's going to draw a curve and it's gonna use that to generate a cable. The cool thing about this is these are all adjustable either by tapping the N key and going into the bag of pie section right here. So notice how I can adjust things like the rigidity as well as the start offset, other things like that. You can also do that by going over into the actual modifier settings themselves. This is good because you can use this to add things like materials. So for example, if I wanted to add materials to any of these curves or any Anything like this, I could do that using the modifier itself. So there's a ton of different things you can adjust in here. I don't wanna get way into it right now, but you can definitely use this in order to create these adjustable cables, no problem. And um, this is the first time I think I've really seen this functionality built into a free tool like this. So there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with this, but this can now do cables. All right, so next up we've got the siding tool. So the siding tool is gonna allow you to add siding to objects inside of Blender. So if you look at this, let's go ahead and add a material to it just so we can see it a little bit better. And actually I'm gonna jump over into solid mode for this one just so you can see what it's doing a little bit better. But basically this is a tool that actually adds siding to objects. So notice how I can adjust things like the distance between the siding pieces as well as the width and the depth of the pieces that are created. So you can use this in order to create a lot of different kinds of siding types. Notice that you can set this to go along different axes like this just by making adjustments. So for example, notice how I could use this to make like a lattice look or something like that really quickly inside of Blender. We do want to make sure that we've applied our rotation and scale in here, but notice how all of these on the different axes are adjustable so that you can kind of make whatever you want using this siding tool. Now I will say that we're kind of limited to like square objects right now. So you can adjust like the angle of those, but I don't think you can create more complex shapes, at least at the moment that I've seen. So um, this is still an interesting tool though. You can also set it where you don't keep the original and then it makes this like really interesting lattice looking shape in here. So next up, we've got the fence function. So if I tap the J key at a fence, what it's gonna do is it's gonna allow us to draw a curve like this. So I'm just gonna draw a simple curve like this and it's going to generate a fence. So you can set this to either create a poly line or a Bezier line. So for example, if I wanted this to be more of a Bezier curve, I would just do the same thing, but I would select the option for Bezier right here. So then we would just draw on here and it's going to generate that fence. Notice that you can come in here and adjust that curve. So for example, if I selected these different points and move them around, the fence is going to move along with it. So we can use this in order to adjust um, the path that the fence follows along. And so from here, there's a ton of interesting things we can do with this, right? So you can set this so that it has a different height wall on it, as well as the width 
of the base here, but then you can also come in here and set if there's randomization on this fence. So I change that by changing the random tangent. So notice how if I adjust the random tangent, what it's gonna do is it's gonna rotate these along these axes like this. So you can set this to have a more random fence, or if you set the randoms to zero, you can have a more uniform fence. So you can also adjust the distance between these posts, as well as adjusting things like your scale, as well as your bottom and top like this. So this is a fast, easy way to add fencing um, in here. And again, part of a free tool, which is pretty amazing. So you can also adjust the materials over here in the Bagapai fence modifier that this automatically creates. All right, so next up, we've got the tiles function. And so this one isn't one that I've 100% got figured out, and I don't think it's been added to the documentation yet. But basically what it, what, what it does is if you tap the J key, click on tiles, what it's gonna do is it's gonna place a bag of pie tiles section right here. So if you look at these tiles, these are basically like roof tiles in here, right? And so this is in here as an object. So I think what you're supposed to do is I think that you're supposed to rotate it. So just uh, R, Z, negative 90 and kind of align it like this. I'm not 100% sure, like I said. Um, so if I'm doing this wrong, I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. But um, I think what you do is you just kind of align it with the object that you want in here. And then you can adjust things like your counts as well as your length and width. The only thing I'm not liking about this, and honestly, it's probably driven by the object axis. So actually, I think I can fix this. So hold on, I'm going to move my origin to my 3D cursor like this. Nope, it doesn't do it. So one, one thing I don't like about this, and I may be doing this wrong, is it seems to be basing your count based on your central point. So I guess what you could do is you could move this over and align it with the center of your object like this but you can adjust counts on your X and Y axes, as well as adding things like a little bit of random rotation in here. So if you wanted this to have a little bit more of a random look or something like that, all of this is completely adjustable in here. So this one is super interesting to me. You can go in and you can set a material in the, uh, in the uh, modifier right here. So notice how this now has that material in there. All right, so in addition, if you get the Bag of Pie assets, um, there's a ton of different uh, assets that are contained inside of here. So not only Bag of Pie assets, which is like plants and other things like that, but there's also some smart things that are set up in here as well. So for example, if I move over, right, there's some like smart setup fences and stairs and other things like that. So if I drag this in, notice how this is like a pre-made stair that's in here. Well then once we have the pre-made stair, we can make adjustments to that stair. So you've got the fence, you've got other things like that that are all adjustable once you bring them in. So it's a really fast way to create these. Um, notice how it's super, super easy to set this up. So you've got these, but then you've also got the other assets that are over here, which includes all the plants and stuff. Full disclosure, I have not, even with the install button, been able to get this to quite work. There's supposed to be a button under asset browser um, that allows it, you to install those assets as an asset library. But for whatever reason, it isn't working for me. It's probably something I'm doing wrong, but you can also just append those files if you decide that you wanna do that. So in addition to all of those assets, if you get the assets version, there's also a button now in your scatter. So if you're scattering something on a surface like these trees, if I click on this button right here, there's an option here to make instances real. So what that's gonna do is that's going to basically convert those into objects. So if you're trying to like export to another software or something like that, that could definitely be a valuable tool. So you can also customize your Pi menu now just by going into the bag of pie modifier right here. And there's an option on here for pie menu customization. So you can uh, basically select what's shown and what isn't in here. So if you don't want something shown, you can just click on it in order to remove it from that menu. And then finally, if you also have Scatter5, pretty soon there's going to be an asset pack available for Scatter5 as well. So um, you can use these assets as a kind of a plug into that tool as well. So overall, massive new update, especially since you can download the Bagpie modifier for free. I recommend you go do that. Um, I'll have links to both in the notes down below. Again, remember that if you end up on the assets page and you want the free modifier, there's a button on there in order to download that. If you are interested in the assets, it's a really great asset pack as well. So this could be a good chance to get something that kind of integrates together. But either way, I will link to that in the notes down below. Leave a comment, let me know what you thought. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.